right. Welcome to the stream. I like my new transition. It's working good. So, welcome, welcome. This is, uh, I'm Dildorf, and uh, we are going to be streaming what I'm calling a Monster Mash stream, I suppose. But, um, first we're going to start off with, I'm going to be basically transferring this creature named Kestak Avatar of Sesnek. 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 Um, from Roll20 into Foundry. So, you guys get to maybe watch building a creature from scratch in Foundry um, instead of either importing it or using the just the um, what is it called well, let's let's go over there real quick let's see here so here's roll 20 switch over to here Foundry yeah so you've got this compendium inside the compendium You've got monsters. So, by default, Foundry has all the SRD available monsters there that you can just pull in and use. Um, apparently already has all the art for it as well. Oh, sorry. Wait, is it other creatures? Oh yeah, here they are. Yeah, so, and, yeah, it has some artwork worked out for all of them, so, um, I mean, those are all there for use, but if you have a creature, or you're running a module that doesn't have, isn't using an SRD creature, or maybe you're using, um, one of your own you want to make up, which is kind of what I'm doing here, um, kind of, so, <laughs> the creature I'm going to be modifying is one that was in an adventure that I ran as a one shot. Now the adventure was called Return of the Lizard King. Um here we go. By Sean Merwin. I found it on the DMs Guild. I bought it on there, downloaded the PDF, um, and ran this adventure. And I ran it um basically where the timeline of this adventure was running was at the same time as my current Tomb of Annihilation campaign. So, the idea is, stuff that happened in this cam campaign has consequence on what's going to happen in their game. And weirdly, or not weirdly, but they're really it wasn't really relevant. I ran this months ago, um, and nothing that happened here was really relevant in my current Tomb of Annihilation game. Um, until kind of recently. I could have had it become relevant, but... Um, I'm, I'm setting this up, and I kind of want to bring back the people that were in the one-shot to this uh, session that I'm going to run this uh, kind of adventure I'm making that involves the Lizard King here. So basically what happened at the end of this adventure, spoilers if you run it, um, or if you want to gonna play in it, I doubt it, but this is a DM-focused stream, so there's going to be spoilers. So they go to this pyramid um, of Cisnek, and inside there's a bunch of lizard folk, and their, um, their king is trying to basically do this ritual, which is going to um, give him the blessing of Sesamek, which is like, uh, he's like a lizard folk god. You can look him up. There's some information about him. Most of it's in second edition. There's nothing modern about it. But it's a, it's a really cool god if you want to look into the background and everything. Anyway, so he's doing a ritual. At the same time, he has a um, shaman that is trying to perform his own ritual and use Kestak, which is the king, as a sacrifice. So depending on which outcome here, where either you defeat Ossal, and meaning Kestak completes his ritual and has his transformation becoming an avatar of Sisnek, or um, Kestak is defeated and uh, Ossal's offer goes and he summons a demon. Um, it doesn't say what demon, it leaves it open to for you to choose. So you could pick, and it kind of lets you choose almost any demon lord, because basically the idea is Ossal does this thing, and he's not really sure how it's going to work, and whatever creature he summons is not good for anybody. It's going to... So what had ended up happening is they defeated Ossal, instead of going down and defeating Kestok. So that means Kestok's uh, ritual succeeded. 
And now he is an avatar of Cessnik. So, um, that's what we're building today. Or that's what I'm transferring over into. Because I already built him a long time ago. But I built him in Roll20. And I want to bring him over into um, Foundry. So, um, we can look at Kestlak, the avatar of Cessnik here. Um, we got a 20 AC. Um, 184 health. 40 feet of movement speed. Um, he's also a big boy. Yeah, he's a huge demon. Um, his normal size was large. I figured if he became an avatar, he'd bump up in size a little bit. Um, he's got all these stats uh, here where he's got sa extra saving throws for con, wisdom, and charisma. He's got athletics, deception, perception. Um, he's resistant to cold and fire, which is kind of almost all demons have. And then he's also got resistance from non-magical attacks for bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Pretty typical. Immune to poison, and he's immune to lightning. Now, the reason why I gave him immunity to lightning is... Let me pull up another PDF. If I can find it. I have one. Let me see if I can just search Sess. Oh, there it is. There's this PDF. I actually... I wish I knew where I got this. I have no idea where I got this, but... So, this is a second edition avatar, Cisnec avatar, right here. Um, but if you look at it, um, he's got 18 levels of Lizard King, 14 levels of Mage, and 14 levels of Cleric, making him a very powerful creature. Um, I don't want... This isn't going to be a level 20 thing. So, I'm not making him this strong. But I did want to look at this and kind of get inspiration on how I create him. And one of the things that he has is i believe immunity to lightning damage it says it somewhere in here so that's why i gave it to him because i just i guess that's part of the lore is Cessnek is uh immune to lightning damage so no biggie give him immunity give him immunity to poison and poisoned and charmed he had those on his sheet already um 90 feet of dark vision i gave him 30 feet of true sight for becoming an avatar of Cessnek. that feels like something that he would have um Abyssal, Common, Draconic. I think he already had those languages before. And when I say before, I'm talking about his stat sheet here. Uh, Kestak stat sheet right here. So this is where I started. Um, I started with a CR6 uh, lizard folk creature. And then I'm basically taking inspiration from uh, this avatar and kind of combining it with this to create this Kestak avatar of Cessnek. So, um, all right, so he's got this, he's got Amphibious, I believe he, oh, he didn't have it on here, I guess I gave it to him, because I think all the lizard folk even have it, so I just tapped it on. Demon Head, so guess that he gets uh, advantage on his perception checks, um, and he cannot be blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, stunned, or knocked unconscious. I guess because he has two heads, he has um, advantage. I don't know, the can't be blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, stunned, or knocked unconscious. Um, I'm not sure if I would just keep that. I might change this because that seems kind of powerful. Um, what I would do is if you needed to cast, if you wanted to blind him, for example, you'd have to basically treat him like two heads, two creatures, and you have to blind both heads. So, or charm. If you charm one head, the other head's not charmed. Definitely, like, so, like, you, you'd have to kind of, that's kind of how maybe I'll reword this in a way. Maybe we'll do that here on stream. So, for Avatar of Cessnik, I just gave him legendary resistances. Oops, I'm going to click that. So, if you know how those work, they are what you give very powerful creatures, mostly boss creatures that you want to not be solved by... A simple banish spell. And it's like, oh, now he's gone for three rounds. Let's clean up his adds. And then when he gets back, we can kill him. This lets the DM go, oh, you're going to cast banish on him? Oh, that's strange. Your spell looks like it was going to take hold, but he succeeds instead of failed. And what's cool is you can roll it first. So you roll. If he succeeds, you don't have to do anything. If he fails, you can be like, nah, that's a succeed. So, great. And then I gave him uh, innate spell casting. Um, he has no spell casting here. But reading on Cessnek here... Um, he has a bunch of spells that he knows innate. So, I gave him those spells and gave him certain per days. So, something that Sesenek does apparently is he likes to charm. So, he can do charm person three times a day, but he can also do it once at level six um, per day. 
Um, he can darkness at will. Pretty cool. He can just a little ball of darkness, and with his true sight, it's gonna come to candy. I believe that's. So he was able to. Well, you know what? Yeah, he had true sight here, but he didn't have anything that really could take advantage of. So, giving him darkness lets his true sight really kick in. Um, so he's got darkness at will. Uh, he's got stinking cloud once a day and cloud kill once a day. Um, some powerful spells that he'll just cast probably towards the beginning of the fight. Um, so, do do do. Alright, we'll skip the legendary actions for now. We're going to go through his regular actions. So he's got two heads. We're going to give him two bite attacks. Um, so he's got the multi-attack here. This one says seven. Holy crap, wait, that's weird. Did I do anything? Okay. It says seven attacks. That's a lot for a multi-attack creature. Um. Oh, but I think I reduced this to five, actually. Yeah, this should only be five. Because I thought seven was kind of ridiculous. So basically, he's got an Emperor's Fork, which is a special trident. Um, he has two long swords. So basically he's got four arms. So that's the other thing that he gets. So he only he's depicted with two arms here with the art. Um Cessnack has four arms. Um so I gave I figured the avatar he'd grow some extra arms. So he, two of those arms will be holding an Emperor's Fork, which is a two-handed um a trident. Um I gave the trident re or a ten foot reach because I figured it's going to be a big-ass trident that's being held by a huge demon. It's going to have some reach on it. Um, so it's 3d6 plus 5 piercing damage, and it crits on a 19 or 20. That's like the special ability of the Emperor's Fork. Um, this will be an item that drops that somebody can pick up and use. So we'll see. Um, I have to maybe think about that and maybe if this is balanced or not, because this is a really powerful weapon for a player to get. So I might tweak this. Um, I might make it do, instead of 3d6, maybe 3d4 damage, but double it because he's a big demon, so it would be, like, in the demon's hands, because he's so huge, it's 64 attack, but if the players get it, it's only 3d4. We'll see. Um, and then he could bite. He's got two heads, so both heads can bite. Um, the claws are on here in case he gets disarmed somehow. That would really be the only way he would ever really switch to his claw attacks. Um, and, but he would get four of them if uh, he ha is completely armed. Now the last thing here is we have this demonic shout. So here, unleashes a terrible shout. Each creature within 10 feet of guest stack must make a four DC 14 constitution saving throw, taking 45 or 10d8 force damage on us. Uh, failed saving throw or half as much on a successful one. This is huge. This is big damage here. So I didn't, I don't think I changed anything. I just upped the DC on it. The reason why I did that is because this is already a ton of damage. So, um, yeah, so this is already a ton of damage. I figured just increase the DC on it by a little bit and just keep it as is. Now for the legendary actions, um, I let him be able to cast darkness as a legendary action. Since he can cast it at will, this is kind of cool because it'll let you cast darkness basically when you need to um, for Kestak. And it'll keep Kestak in a bubble of darkness for most of the fight. Um, unless they figure out a way to dispel it. Well, uh, Dance for me, you cast Charm Person at first level. Now this doesn't mean he can override. He can only still cast that three per day. So, but this lets him cast it as a legendary action, meaning he'll be able to just get those off um, and not sacrifice his normal attacks. And then reposition. Basically, if, once he runs out of charms, he's basically gonna, uh, his legendary actions are going to be casting darkness and repositioning. I might throw a long sword attack in here for the legendary action. Um, and maybe make darkness cast cost two actions because darkness is... Darkness is a pretty good spell, and being able to cast that at will whenever you want. Um, maybe you shouldn't be able to do that twice in a legendary action, so have it eat up too. So yeah, we might make that cost two actions. Uh, Dance for me, since it's already limited by three per day, we're not going to limit that anymore. Reposition, it's only half his movement speed, so he's going to move 20 feet. Um, that's fine, I think. And then maybe we will add the longsword attack to kind of just be the 
he doesn't need to reposition, we just need to put him have put out a little more damage. Um, we might do that. So, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Alright, let's move over. So, I'm going to go ahead and let's put this like this. And then we will bring this over here. So, here's Foundry, here's Roll20. <laughs> uh, normally, what, like, if I was doing this, ignore the Roll20 portion. Just be like, this would be like a stat sheet. Either you would create yourself somewhere or grab from a PDF or something of some adventure. Um, doo -doo -doo. So, let's make a new sheet. So, we are going to call this Kess Thok. Avatar of Sess Apostrophe in Neck. Okay, nice long name here. NPC, keeping him in this War of the Lizard King folder here. So I don't have artwork for him yet. Um, I'm I have a I have a friend who's going to be creating a token, hopefully for this creature because I want him to be kind of memorable. Um, since he's going to be like this big boss that they're going to have to fight. Um. So let's go through. So it, it says medium here to the size. I think we picked huge. So we're going to go over here and make him huge. He's a huge boy. He's got three out of three legendary actions, three out of three legendary resistances. Um, he has no layer actions. They're not fighting him in his lair. I'm not giving him layer actions. It's not going to be relevant. Um, alignment. He is chaotic evil. Uh, type. He is a fiend um and then you put in parentheses demon uh source um i mean it's I, i'm just gonna type homebrew here because at this point he's a homebrew monster and okay? i've taken enough things from different places that i think he qualifies as homebrew so 184 health uh health formula we got 16d 12 plus 80 Armor class 20. Uh, movement. Let's go in here. Wait, why is it not letting me modify his movement? Movement! The fuck? Cast that? Alright, I'll figure out why that's not working at some point. Alright, uh, stats. What do we got? We got 18 strength. So some of this seems low, and I might increase some of it. It is boosted from his normal stat sheet, and they're all pretty high stats, but there we go. Oh, so the server connection was having problems, so now we have this open 50 times. All right, let's pop it over once. All right, so he's got a walking speed of 40 and a swim speed of 40. Feet, no hover, done. Boom. All right, um, what is he proficient in for saving throws? He's got constitution, wisdom, and charisma. And then for skills, we have athletics, we have deception, and we have perception. All right, um, and that's good because that helps with his passive perception. Oh, I'm like, why is this? It's so slow. It's because the CR is not where it's supposed to be. So he's got 15 CR. That should boost that. Yep, perception plus seven. Beautiful. All right, um, what else do we got? We have damage resistance, so we'll pop that open. So he's resistant to cold and fire and non-magical physical. I love that it's just a single checkbox for that. And no. Oh. And then we are going to do immunity for poison and lightning. Lightning and poison. Boom. And then condition immunities is charmed and poison. Poison. Oh. Okay. Um, Alright, languages. That's up here. So he's got Abyssal. He's got Common. And he's got Draconic. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and feel like I'm going live. Building monsters and taking requests. Let's go. Oh, 
Maybe we'll get some more people in here. All right, uh, back to this. All right, so Kestak, Avatar, Cessnak. I think we got all that sorted out. Um, senses. So he has dark vision up to 90 feet, true sight 30, and then the passive perceptions are already set. Oh, uh, well, that's weird. Weird. Where does it not say passive perception anywhere on these sheets? Guess not. All right, so features. So in uh, Foundry, like everything past this, like all of this, all of this, and all of this is going to be qualified as um, features. Um, spellbook, we'll also add spells to the spellbooks. Effects of biography, I'm not even gonna worry about. Like, it's this is just for me to run it. I don't need to put stuff in there. Um, if you're world building and maybe doing stuff in there, maybe that's important, but not to fool me. So we're gonna do features. That's what these right here are called. So amphibious is gonna be the first feature we're gonna add. So, call this amphibious. It's passive. I'm not gonna put any requirements. I'm not gonna put a source. Um, okay. Go in there and add the description here. Oops. Why is? I guess that can breathe air and water. Boom. Done. Um, so in, in this, um, ooh, you know what? We can check the compendium for monster features. There actually might be amphibious in here. It is. Boom. So we're going to go ahead actually and do it that way. So let's trash this and just drag amphibious on that. Boom. Oh yeah. This creature can breathe air and water. I mean, I guess if I click that, it'll show up as Kestak can breathe air and water, right? There we go. Oh, it doesn't. That's weird. It doesn't actually replace it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do pass. Can't do that. It's still a little too bad. All right. So I don't think demonic head will be one that is automatically in there, but legendary um, resistance might. So, legendary actions are, and legendary resistances are beautiful. You can just put those right in there. I forgot about this stuff. This makes things so much easier. Um, and then we also have innate. So, innate spellcasting we're going to toss in here, too. These are all things we'll probably have to edit, but um, might as well pop them in there. But let's also add the demonic, uh, demonic head. <laughs> uh... I mean, you can be really dirty about that. I'm not going to say anything more than that. But I bet you succubus know all about demonic head. All right, so uh, Kestak has advantage on wisdom percent checks and cannot be blinded. So we're going to modify this because I don't know if I like the just cannot be blinded and charmed and deafened. I want to write... So he has advantage... On wisdom and perception checks. You know what? Let's do it this way. Instead of the making it complicated, where he's got, where they got, we're gonna tell them that they got to blind each head to make it. Let's give him advantage on wisdom perception checks and advantage on magic that causes test. Uh, be blinded, charmed, deaf, and frightened, stunned, or knocked unconscious. So, that means if anywhere, if the magics... You could probably go in here and list specific spells, and that's probably would be maybe the thing to do. But, just use your DM. If it's something that needs to, that's trying to charm Kestak, he has advantage. If, he's, if you're trying to blind Kestak, he has advantage. So this is kind of giving him... It's like a weakened, magical... Like, because... Uh, there's lots of you can just I could just give a magic resistance, which gives him an advantage on all of it. But that seems lame, um, the, because it's his demonic head and he has two heads. We're just making it so he only gets advantage on spells that try to blind, charm, deafen, frighten, stun, or knock him unconscious. 
thinking of knocked unconscious would be covered with like the sleep spell really can't think of any other spells that would just knock you unconscious all right um so a cool thing about the uh, foundry is it comes with um comes with like icons you can use for things um i also have an add-on that has some additional ones so i'm going to use those um because i tend to like the way those look a little better so demonic head i don't know what i'm going to be looking for here so actually you know what let's go to the spells first so we'll go to system D, &D icons probably not spells skills maybe let's pop this open like this so i mean that skull could work for demonic head i guess Ooh, I like this one. Yeah, let's just use that one. And I can scroll a little bit longer. But that seems perfect. I mean, it's called Blood 13. But, like, Demonic Head. There. That looks cool. Demonic Head. Demonic Head. Alright, so, Kestak has advantage of wisdom for sub checks, and advantage of magic that causes Kestak to be blind, charmed up. Okay, that's cool. So instead of him can't being blind, he just has advantage against it. Alright, so legendary resistances. Uh, I just got these placeholders that don't get filled in, but if Kestak fails the saving throw, he can choose to succeed instead. Easy mode. Um, all right, so the innate spell casting here. So we definitely want to modify this. So we're going to type in his name again, cast box, innate casting spell ability. I believe it is charisma. Nope, I have it as wisdom. Is wisdom. It can innately cast the following spells requiring no material. Components. Yep, that's fine. So, except I got a different spell list here. So we're going to go in here. Oh, okay, so that's the correct way to do it, I guess. So we want to do at will. So let's just put darkness here. Boom. Uh, don't need the cat. So darkness. All right, three per day. So we got charm, person. That's all I can cast three times per day. And then once per day, we have, and it's alphabetical order usually, so H I J K. So charm, person, at level six. Um, stinking, no, not capital, stinking cloud. And then actually, before that, we want to put cloud. So. All right, so. Done. So now he's got all those spells. Now the thing is, is this doesn't put him in his spell sheet, so we're going to still have to add it to his spell sheet. But now it's there. So, boom. Legendary resistances, innate spell casting, legendary actions. So let's tweak this. Um, so we're going to type in this cast stock. He can take three legendary actions. Yeah, okay. Um, he... So he regains legendary actions spent at the start of his turn. Alright, um. That's bizarre. Why won't it let me modify this? Oh, that's fine. Actually, I don't know how they do legendary reaction or how they're done normally. So let's pull a creature up that has. You know what? I know who has it. This guy. So if we go to his features. Wait. Oh, this is. Ha! <laughs> that's right. That's not the actual. A sir rack here. Um, I think that is in my NPCs folder. There it is. Okay. Features. Legendary resistance. Duh. 
But the reactions. Huh. Oh, so you can label them as legendary actions here. Okay, so the, it'll be a drop down and you choose the usage of an object. Okay. You know what? Um, this song? Not a fan of it. Let's just skip it. Juicy, juicy. <laughs> Alright. Um, let's do the spell casting before we let's finish the spell. So we have wisdom as his thing and he says level zero which is not true he is level never mind don't need to change that because it's an eight spell casting all right so let's go ahead and go to the compendium and type spells in all right and let's find all the spells so darkness wabam so Do we go in here and do we make this? I mean, it's fine. We're just using them as reference, so we don't really need to set them up. Uh, charm person. Um, what else do we give him? He has stinky cloud. He's stinky. And then we have club pill. Okay, cool. Wonderful. I just clicked a new one. I don't know why. Back to Alright, so we got the spells put out there. Charm person, darkness, sticking cloud, cloud kill features. Nice. Alright, let's do let's do his actions next, and then we'll do his legendary actions. Alright, so the first one we want to do is multi-attack. So actually let's pull up that monster features list again. Because I bet you multi-attacks in. So there it is. Boom. Alright, multi-attack. But we're gonna want to modify it. So we're gonna put test stack here. Next number of attack actions and reactions. Okay, so honestly, we're just gonna copy what I have over here. She makes five attacks, one emperor's fork attack. Um Alright, so lowercase that's a long sword. Um, I've noticed that uh, I, I kind of capitalize things when I don't need to. I kind of make everything proper nouns. Um, don't need to do that. Alright, so bite. Look at that. There's already a bite. So we're going to pull that in. Um, let's just, I think the damage I increased, so we're going to tweak it a little bit. So, yeah, so the bite attack we have here does 2d8 uh, plus 4. Actually, it's just 2. Yeah, 2d8 plus 4. But, um, and then we have it as pierce. Alright, so let's test this for the rolls. Bite him. Alright, there we go. Roll the 15 to hit. Which is... Oh, he's got 4 plus 5. Okay, so that's not right. We don't need to add that plus 4. Because it's already using strength as the attack. So that's fine. So, let's try it again. There we go. So now it's going to be... Oh, wait. Why is it still plus four? I thought I... Three, oh, it's 2d8 plus... Oh, that's the damage. So, wait. I'm going to do it. So, what's the damage? It's 2d8. Yeah, so we do want to add four to it. I wonder... Can you add just... Can you tell it to add the strength?
I don't know if there's a way to tell it to add strength to it, so we're just gonna do... So strength is plus four. That's fine. Alright. Launch. To be a plus four. Beautiful. Alright, claw. Let's see if there's a claw attack. And there is. So... Oh, it sits... It, why is it set as a legendary action? It's just action. Um, so it's a melee weapon attack, strength, damage formula for his claws is 1d6 plus 4, slashing, alright, so I'm just going to go to the bite attack here and open that up use it as a reference so one action so if it's just one target range we're gonna do five feet i think i have this up for here for five feet i don't think that is ten yeah it's only five feet um no limited uses max this is feet all right that looks good so we will claw there we go 1d6 plus four which is what we have for that. We roll the 28. We're really good. Beautiful. Emperor's Fork. So. Alright, so Trident's not there. But Trident should be in the items. So what's funny is they kind of treat items the same way as they just treat, like, features. So you can take an item, like a Trident here. I was trying to fish, but we're just gonna drag that in there. Uh, yes. Cool. All right. So yeah. So you got a trident here, but this is a special trident. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna rename this into the Emperor's Book. Apparently, I'm losing connection to the server, which is frustrating because then it makes saving stuff really difficult. All right, so one action, uh, range, so he, you can throw a trident normally. I'm not going to let him be able to throw this, so we're just going to do 10 feet, um, one target, uh, weapon attack, blah, blah, blah. So this is, oh, so plus mod. Okay, so i got to remember that if I want to just do that. I've been just hard coding it, but um, it's not 1d6, it's 3d6. Wait, why do I have it as plus 5? That doesn't even make sense. Alright, but there's also a crit range on this. And I need to figure out how to do that. Crit threshold. So this is with a mod. This is a, the Better Rolls mod. Um... I think that adds the feature so that I'm able to have additional crit range on things. Oh, that's not something that Foundry has default. All right, so I think we need to test this until we get a crit and make sure it crits on a 19, I guess. We'll just roll advantage too, so I can just roll two d20s. There. Oh, look at that. It worked. I just typed. That's so fucking good. Just type. <laughs> um, cool. Do I have to do like 19 to 20? Or does it just still automatically crit on a 20? Let's keep rolling and see if it crits on a 20. There's another 19 crit. We know it crits on 19. I just want to make sure it still crits on 20. Roll a 20, damn it. I will never roll a nat 20 ever in my life. Because I want to. Is this ever going to happen? Double 10s right there. 
Double tens are rarer than a one nat 20. Come on. This is actually kind of hilarious how long this is taking. There it is. Okay, so it's still crits on a 20. Beautiful. So it's set, it's set correctly. So it's going to crit on 19. It does 3d6 damage. Um, look at that crit damage. That is disgusting. All right, and a long sword, which we're going to do the exact same way we just did that, except I don't think I need to modify it at all. So if we go in here, long sword. Um, yep, regular S long sword. Um, let's just roll it. I just want to see it. It should just be good. Let me hit this for done zone. Because he's going to be wielding them in one hand, so I guess technically he could two-hand it, but then he would only get one longsword attack in. So I think two longsword attacks, one hand each, is better. Um, I know that's not technically allowed, with, but he's a monster. And what's cool with monsters is you can just do whatever the hell you want. Like, they don't have to abide from characters. Like, a character couldn't wield two longswords. All right, and the last thing we need to do is demonic shell. Which I don't think there is going to be an equivalent. It's kind of like a breath attack, so maybe if we just pull in a breath attack. So we go back to that monster features, and we just do like a breath. So yeah, we got, what's this do? Oh, okay. Uh, so if we give them like, Maybe we won't do that. What would be like an equivalent for Demonic Shout? Um, there's something, there's an undead creature that has a shout. Is it a, um, well, let's just look at, okay, let's go to the beyond. Let's go. I have all the monsters in here. So. Monsters. Cool. So there's an undead creature. Uh, let's sort by CR. Oh, excuse me. You don't mean to yawn. All right, so there's an undead creature that gives that does a shout, kind of. I kind of want to get the name of it. It's not the specter. Specter does life drain, but it is like a ghost-like creature. All right, where the hell's a skeletal war bear from? Our skeletal out here. It's just something you can make yourself. It's like something to the banshee. Whale. Here it is. Yeah. All right. That's what I want. I want whale because it's basically the same skill. So. So let's go back to monster features. So since I believe banshee. Oh, there's no whale. You know what though? If we go over to where the monsters. Are. We do Banshee. Oh, is Banshee not SRD? Hmm. Alright. I guess there's no getting around it. I'm just going to have to add it. Annoying. So we're going to call this... Uh, yeah, bye -bye. Alright, we're going to call this Demonic Shout. Um, and then, I don't know if I need to put the recharge there. I know, like, down, it'll be right here. So if we recharge on the six. Charge. Yeah. Okay. Um, activation cost one action. Target is 
10 uh, feet radius. Oh, I just... Shit. Alright, 10 feet radius. Um, now this is going to be a saving throw. So the saving throw is ability. Okay, we don't need that. So it's going to be Constitution check. Yeah, we're going to just use a spell casting modifier, easy mode, which is the same. And the damage formula here is just a straight 10 v8, uh, and then it's going to be force damage. We can just copy copy that just over there. So instead of it being 10d8, so 10d8 averages out to 4.5 times 10, so it's 45 damage. Okay, it's parentheses here. So that's details. All right, let's pick a pick a spell. You know what? It'll probably be under skills. Oops, I went to skills. Let's go back. Go to skills. Let's find a shout. I mean, that's kind of a shout. Um, that's a shout. Not very demonic, though. I mean, it's fine. Like, nobody's going to see this except for... That could work. Ooh, I like that. That one. Ah! <laughs> ah! That's 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 the demonic shout. That's just ah! uh, where did Kestak go? Creatures, where the lizard king? Kestak. Oh, yeah. Alright. No, not demonic head, demonic shout. Let's see what this Oh cool, and then it has the little radius. Beautiful. And then it rolled. Oh, let's look at all those ones. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so that's beautiful. Right there. Dunzo. Easy mode. Alright. Um, is he basically ready? So we don't have art. Excuse me. <laughs> um, we don't have art for him yet. Um, I think I can use that one picture as placeholder for now, though. If I just do a portrait. Let's see if we can find where I put that picture. So, I think if we go to my campaigns. Return the Lizard King token source. This should be a cast that. Ooh, he's not here. Where's the token, though? Did I make that token or did I find that token? Where's the art for this? Oh, it's just I used just the token. Alright, I guess we'll just use the token as the art. Alright, so we're gonna just do that for now. All right. So, all right, so we don't need roll 20 anymore. anymore. I basically have transferred. Oh, we didn't do the legend. Somebody should have told me to do, oh, we didn't do the legendary actions here. So, cast that. All right, so we gotta add the legendary actions to this. So, we have reposition. So I'm gonna just add an action called position. It's gonna be one legendary action. There's no target duration, blah blah blah. And it's gonna be I guess it's called utility. I'm gonna put other. I'm gonna put nothing here because it, it doesn't need anything, because all it is is Get stack. 
and move up to a speed without triggering attack of opportunities. On reposition, we will find a something that looks like what a boot or something. So skills here. Let's try to find one that looks like a running icon of some kind. You know, I ran into this last time when I was trying to find one for haste. Or like a haste-like ability. It wasn't really like one for a boot. But so I think I ended up just going to the items and then armor. No, not armor. Yeah, I just ended up using like something like this. So we're just gonna like... I don't know, that seems lame too. Maybe there's a spell that looks good. Like a whooshy fast looking. I mean, lightning. I mean, that could work. Not tornado, but... Oosh. There we go. Fine. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I just want there to be an icon there, because it kind of looks lame when there isn't an icon there. So... Alright, so repositions, one of the legendary actions. Uh, one of the others is darkness. Details, one legendary action. And like like I said, like legendary actions, that you don't need to click the thing. Like this says cast darkness. I can go over here and cast darkness. I don't need to click this to cast darkness. So I don't really need to like duplicate this. I just want that to be there so I can be reminded what his legendary action is. Um, and then for, as far as that goes, I don't, uh, yeah, I think that's a different set of icons there. I don't think I'm going to find that. I might find that in here though. I actually don't know where those icons are for these spells. I go in here and I click this, will this tell me? Modules. Okay, so, oh, it's under modules. So. I go to user data. Modules. Uh, where was it? Oh, oh. media icons oh, what the heck modules platonium huh bizarre There it is. Um, icons. Spell. And then there it is. Cool. I'll just use the same one. Makes it easy. Darkness. Alright, so we were going to make this, I think, two legendary actions. Make things easier. So, yeah, I, I mean, it kind of tracks it three out of three. I wonder if it tracks it during combat effectively and then when it gives it at the beginning of his turn. Um, and then we're going to do the charm one, which is, I have named Dance for me. Don't know why I called it that, but... Um, one action. Just to copy the spell. Guess that cast charm person. Again, I I see I like I capitalized charm person for really no reason. 
So dance for me. Um, icon. We'll do the same thing here. Modules. Potomac. Media. Icon. Let's we'll see if we can find the same one. It's a big heart. All right. Cool. All right. Now, Castex's done. I think. All right, so Kestek, I made a map for him. We got the Lizard King fight here. Switch over to it. Beautiful artwork. Um, this map, I believe... I have to look up uh, the name of the artist I got it from. I believe it's an afternoon map. It's not an initial party map. I believe it is an afternoon map. Is this where I get the jungle? Jungle pack, yeah. Yeah, so these are afternoon maps. Uh, you can find them on... Uh, you can find them on Patreon. I belonged to their Patreon for a while, so I grabbed a bunch of maps from them at the time. <laughs> all right so yeah this fight is gonna be come on why am i having so many connection issues with did my internet go down are you guys there yeah i'm dropping frames too I don't know what's going on here. Google? Alright, Google's up. Alright, now Forge is loading. One second. happening all right well it's fine there's not much else i was going to do instead of forge i was going to switch gears here i've been having these issues with uh forge lately wow my screen makes me all white white going on. all right um we're gonna close it. all right we're done now. We're going to switch gears. So. We're going to open up. Yeah, we're going to open up the stat block generator I like to use. All right, beautiful. I'll switch back to that. All right. D&D &D stat block generator. So, um, you can see the URL there, tetracube, D&D, D&D stat block, .html. So I like this. It's really pretty user-friendly way to create stat blocks that you can save um, where then you can load them. I don't know what printable does, but I always just then do the view image, which lets you just download this as an image. Um, you can also like reformat it into a two column versus one column. Um, so I made this, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this already, the Towering Knight. It was uh, based off of one of the bosses in Demon Souls. So I decided I would make him as a D&D creature. Um, 
He's pretty good. He's got legendary actions, legendary resistance, CR-16. He's a big boss baddie. Oh, he's about as... He's, he's not as complicated as the one I just made, but the same CR. I like to create creatures about the CR, apparently. Alright, so... Cool, we can hit res... So this is what it starts out at with nothing. You modify everything. Um, what I always like to do, though, is I almost always find a creature that... Um, Oh, wow, this is Tomb of Beasts from Cobalt Press. Oh, that's neat. I didn't know that. Alright. Um, so when creating a creature, I always do that. So let's, um, create a creature. What kind of creature should we create? Hmm. I should have came up with some ideas before I streamed. Um, I was kind of hoping I'd get them from you guys, but that's not going to happen right now. So, what I think I'm going to do is... I like using games and movies as references. You know what? For some reason I had this idea that I think Grem like there's not a gremlin stat block. Um now let's just Google Gremlin. Now, of course you're gonna get gremlins from the movie Gremlins. Um and I would be more interested in creating this creature's stat block than a Mogwai. Um maybe I could do both. But I think doing this would be great. So, so let's just do Gremlin D and D. Let's just see if somebody else has done something like this already. Oh, we got a five E. Somebody made a five E race of Gremlins. Wait, are, are Gremlins? Let's see. I was gonna say, I'm like, there's no way. I missed it, and Gremlin's actually a stat block, but it's not. Oh, of course. Of course DM Dave already did a Gremlin. Alright, let's look at his. Um, so he has a Gremlin, and then Mogwai. Alright, we got one. 12 armor class, 3 hit points. We have a climb speed. Low strength, tight decks. Low mental stats. Language is gremlin. Impact tactics, sunlight sensitivity, hypersensitivity. Ooh, it takes damage during sunlight. That's interesting. I mean, there's not much I would change about this, so maybe... Creating a gremlin stat block. Not really something we need to do. Eh, interesting. Um, I don't think I would change anything about this. This is like kind of like the thing that would make them interesting. Um, the thing that's bizarre about it though is like when would this ever come into play when you're playing them? You'd have to play it in a counter where there's, excuse me, where there's lots of water already kind of like in the environment um, and make that like something that can happen. All right, so we're not going to do gremlins because I would just use this step block, the update step block. Ooh, we got another monster of the week, Benjamin Gremlin. Ooh, this guy went a little bit harder. So we have hypersensitivity, claw, 
Light spawn. Any dropped water strikes immediately spawns 1d4 new gremlins. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Oof. Stunning them at the start of their turn. That might be good. Eh. All right, let's come up with something new. Something not gremlin. All right. Um... Let's think of a video game. What games am I playing right now? Resident Evil, or like, at least in this one, there's not nothing. I just did, um, Lady Dimitris' stat block. We don't want to do anything there. I'm not familiar enough with Darkest Dungeon. Bullet's Great is basically the indie. Alright, so, alright. Let's start this. So, I have this idea of, free, of doing a Valheim style survival game. So one of the creatures in there is, like, they have a troll. Um, so, I kind of want to modify the D&D &D troll to be more like the Valheim troll. Look at the loathsome limbs. We're going to get to leave that for sure. Bye. -bye. <laughs> we don't want that. Um, alright, so here's the basic troll. So we have a large giant. That's about right. I don't think I need to change this, but we're gonna... What is a... What would they... So they call it a troll, but what would be, like, the traditional... Like... Viking... Troll. <laughs> so let's, like, we'll get the original troll. Alright. Oh, wow. Okay, so even in Old Norse, the name of them is Troll. Like, that's what I was going to do. I was going to try to change the name, but... So we're going to change the name of this to be a... Black Forest Troll. So, large, giant, tag, chaotic, evil. All great things. Alright, so the main difference here is in Valheim, they don't use claw bite attacks. They either attack with a big giant tree club thing, or they kind of punch, like slam. Um, they don't really regenerate in Valheim. So we're going to get rid of the regenerate ability. We can keep that keen smell. Um, we'll keep the multi-attack. We're going to get rid of the bite. <clears throat> so we'll have, instead of a claw, we're going to edit this. We're going to call it slam. Instead of slashing, it's going to do bludgeoning. And, uh, it's got a plus four for strength, so, yeah, we're going to keep this as 2d6 plus four. Add action, remove that. Cool. All right, so we kind of simplified it. So a black forest stroll. Multi-attack makes three attack. One with a divide and two of the spa, so... Gonna modify that. No bites. Let's wait at two. Yep. 
The troll makes two slam attacks. All right, so we're just going to give it two slam attacks. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new one. It's going to be a melee weapon attack with strength. So we can use this preset here. Reach, give it 10 feet. And we're going to call this the tree club. <laughs> um, it's going to be bludgeoning damage. Um, he's only going to attack with this once, and it's a big, giant club. So, I believe clubs do d6 damage. But I think because it's a big boy, we're going to do 46 for the attack. So, let's update this. So, the true club, QRST. Okay, that's an upward order. Um... Plus seven hit, it's got ten foot reach, one target. It's 18, 46 plus four bludgeoning damage. So I'm gonna buff his health too, because the Valheim creatures are tanky. So we're gonna have 12 hit dice. We're gonna basically just up its level. Um, armor class 15 seems fine to me. But now we gotta calculate its CR. I'm gonna go to one of my favorite places to calculate CR. So the 5e tools has an amazing CR calculator. So first you want to figure out like what you're shooting for. I'm gonna shoot for like 7. CR 7 seems reasonable. So he's got 12 d10. So since he's a large creature with 12 hit dice and what's his con? That count is 20. Wow. Okay, we're done. So it should automatically see 126, 126. So we already have a defense rating of CR. He doesn't have a vulnerability. Now, the regeneration used to mean that he had a vulnerability to fire. We could give him a vulnerability. Oh, here's the other thing about Valheim. I believe they do have a weakness. So let's just go to the Valheim Weekly here. Um, let's see if we can see if they got like a list of the creatures. There they are. And if we go to a troll, boom. Alright, so troll. Aggressive location drops health. All right, he's got 600 health. We're not going to do that. Like, that's completely different. Abilities, punch, log swing, ground slam, log overhead, throw stone. Ooh, that's right. They can throw stones. Let's give him a stone throw attack. That's right. So, weak to piercing, resistant to bludgeoning, immune to spirit. So, if I was going to translate this to D&D, piercing, bludgeoning, and then spirit, I would probably do um, radiant. So let's go ahead and add those because that seems interesting. So damage types. So if we go radiant, immune to radiant, very bizarre. Piercing, vulnerable to piercing, but then resistant to bludgeoning. Now that just added some complexity to this creature that I think it needed. Um, makes it a little more interesting. All the damages here. So, I like, so we got a punch attack, a ground slam attack, and a throw stone attack. So, we got kind of the log swing and punch attack. Um, slam and tree club. I guess we could call it log swing. Log. So, um, like that. So put it above slam. So we got a log swing. Now he does a ground slam, which is kind of like an AOE attack, 
kind of, but not really. But I do like, I forgot that they can throw a stone. So we're going to want to do a throw stone. So throw stone will be a melee. No, it'll be a ranged weapon attack. It'll be called throw stone. So the range of this will be 20 feet seems reasonable with a max of... I don't know, 60? That seems reasonable. Can't throw it that far. Uh, Alright, so there is a reference we're going to reference here, which is giants. There are other giants that chuck stones. So, if we go to, to Beyond again, and we look like Bill? No, no, no. Stone giant. There we go. Uh, rock. So, okay, he can chug it really far, but he's a huge giant. He's not a large. Um, and this guy's much stronger than the, our troll. The troll's only 18 compared to his 23. Um, so D10, that's what I want. I wanted to see what hit dice they use or what damage dice they use. So honestly, 2D10 probably seems reasonable for this. Um... And it's going to be bludgeoning again. Which is his second hardest hitting thing. So he can either slam twice. Chuck a stone. If he's out of range with his melee. And then swing a log if... Hit. Yeah, I mean, okay. So the way CR calculation works. So we got the damage there. Um, he's got vulnerabilities, and he's got resistances, and you know he's got an immunity too. So let's just bump that to immunities. He can't fly. He doesn't have any save proficiencies, which is fine. Um, so damage per round. So the way they do damage per round is usually you calculate how much damage you can do in a round. And that's what it is. Um, if it can do different things, you take three rounds and average it. Um, and then for like AOE attacks, you always assume it hits at least two people. But that doesn't apply anything here. So basically... His most efficient damage here. So that's kind of like where this is kind of weird. Where I think he slamming twice doing 22 damage is more efficient than swinging his log. So I think we got to do something to make the log swing better. We could do something like where it hits, it can hit multiple people. But I don't know. We're, we're tweaking right now. So, and also throw stone is also, like, just better. Um, damage. We're just going to assume slim. So he's going to do 22 damage per round. With two slims. That seems reasonable. He's got a plus 7 to hit. Damn it. Seven. Plus seven to hit. Wow, we made a weak creature. He's only CR four? How does that make sense? Because we made him stronger than a regular troll by giving him more life. And it, he's hitting her? The regeneration might be what makes the troll such high CR. Like, if we put the 10 regenerate a normal troll has, that does bump it up to CR5. Huh, bizarre.
I mean, let's just say if he hits with 30 with two stone throw attacks, that bumps him to CR5. Yeah, hey, this guy's CR5. I didn't really, we didn't really make him any stronger. But now he's a block full of strong. Which is from Dawn. I mean, that's what I do. I keep playing with it. I, I, I'm I, not happy with the log swing, though. It doesn't... Like, you might as well just delete it and have him just to slam and throw a stone. But one of the most iconic things in... in uh, What's it called? In Valheim is when you run into the troll with the big fucking tree trunk. He likes to smash down on people. So... Hmm... I wonder how they like determined so let's like a great club great clubs normally i think do a d12 bludgeoning damage so how do they get 3d8 plus out of it instead of a d12 like that's what's bizarre to me like do they decide how much damage they want it to do and then figure out the dice amount from there like uh, that's something that i don't know monster creation how they kind of determine that so i, I mean i just fudge with it until i like it all right so for log swing to be good it's got the higher reach than the slam tech maybe that's how we justify it it just has that longer reach Yeah, I mean, I guess it's fine as it is. All right, we're going to save this. I'm going to post this to Instagram, too. So we're going to do... Let's go to my Instagram folder. I got a Black Forest Troll stat block. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, we'll just save this right there. I'll probably post this to Instagram later. Get a little Valheim troll action. Do I just sit here and do I crank out all of those different Valheim creatures? Alright, well, which one would be the next one that I'd want to do? Um... <laughs> so, like, in my thing, I was thinking, like, like, I would, like, you would just do, I would just do a normal four. Like we, there, like we, there's not. I don't need to create stats for all the different creatures. Pretty sure there's stats for a deer in D and D. Like if I type in deer here, yeah, monster deer, boom, done. I just use this. Oh, deer's bite. Um, that's fine. So we don't need to do a deer. Um, Draugr would be cool to do. I do like the idea of making different un un different undead type of creatures. Because, like, zombies are cool. Not really. Zombies are not cool. They're kind of lame. Uh, skeletons. I like skeletons. But, like, having a Draugr has a different type of undead. Wraith. I mean, a, and wolves are in D&D &D already. You don't need to change anything about the wolves. So, fuelings, they're basically goblins. Um, let's do, let's do a Grayling. Let's do a Grayling. So, Graylings, I would say, are probably... I don't even know what we would start a Grayling off. I kind of want to start off with a Goblin. And go from there. So if we use a goblin. Because they're going to say size small goblin. 
Um, now we're going to change the type to Fey. And we're going to change the name to a Graylin, of course. Uh, gonna have to see because Graylin might be cut. Trolls aren't copyright because trolls are definitely in the in the domain, but Grayling. Google the term Grayling. Valheim. There's a type of fish called a Grayling. Yeah, so Grayling's definitely gonna be a copyrighted term. So I don't want to call this a Grayling. We could call it a Treeling. So they are tree-like creatures, so that, that's the question, though. Are they fey, or are they plant creatures? I kind of want to make them plant creatures. Godlog. Neutral evil. No, they're definitely chaotic. I think they would be chaotic neutral, actually. Because I don't necessarily think they are evil. But they are def they definitely want to protect nature. So they're definitely like in that type. They don't use shield, they have natural armor. Yeah, bonus what they have. Alright, so the thing is, is they're not fast. Um, but I would probably give them higher strength. So we're gonna make them kind of strength-based little dudes. But not very strong. Plus one. So we're shooting for... So goblins are one quarter. We're actually going to shoot for one eighth CR. Um, they're going to be very, very little. They are not set. <laughs> we're going to give them some skill, but it's not going to be stuff. Um, I kind of want to give them a 25. Just slow them down a bit. Um, so, update step like here. So, armor class, we have no... Give them 12. 12 armor seems pretty, pretty good. Um, hit dice, we're gonna bump this down to 1. Um, but we're gonna give them some con, I think. Let's make that their best stat, actually. Since the dex was 14 for a goblin, we're going to give the constitution 14. So that puts him at 5 hit points. That's actually, that's good. That's kind of what we're going for. Nimble escape. Uh, don't need that. Um, now we're going to do a claw. I can find... Uh... I doubt it's just a straight up claw. We just do an arm strike as a sample. So instead of. No, that's actually not a good one to do. We'll just do. Just do melee weapon tech, strength based. Um, so the reach is gonna be just by feet. Strength. Now, claws usually do slashing, so we're going to do 1d4 slashing damage. Oh, I'm going to call this a claw attack. Sometimes short bow. I think they throw. Do the Graylings throw. What are their attacks? I don't know what Jaws is, I don't know what... Yeah, so they just do a slash with their claws. So, this is where Valheim's fun, is the different resistances. So, Graylings, which, so they're going to be weak to fire, which means definitely makes sense that they are um, trees. So we're going to make them vulnerable to fire. But then we're going to make them resistant to poison and immune to spirit. So we're going to make them resistant... To poison, and they're gonna be immune to radiance again. That gives them a little bit more things. 
Um, you know, we're, we're languages though, we're not from them. There's no goblin. We're gonna give him... We'll do Sylvan, I guess? Is that the name of it? Terran? What do they know Terran? Yeah, if we're gonna... Terran seems... Speaks Terran. Uh, Dark Vision? That's fine. I think, yeah, giving them Dark Vision, because they tend to come out at night more, and they're definitely... Definitely would attack more at night. Um, so if we go to the CR calculator and we go small creature 1d6 with a 14 constitution. Um, with the defensive CR of 0 and then his attack is 3 damage with a because he got a plus three. Plus three to hit. Without the immunities, with no vulnerabilities. None of this bullshit. Yeah, so we got it. CR18. That's basically what he is. Alright, so... Hey, Kazumeki. Thanks for joining. I'm making Dungeons and Dragons monsters. Um, and I'll take requests if there's anything you want me to see stat out. Nothing too crazy. Please. I don't want to make, like, a CR25 giant creature. Like, I'm not statting out Cthulhu right now. I'm statting out a treeling, and then I just did a, uh... A, I'm basically going through the Valheim creatures. This is something I wanted to do anyway, so I'm just going to do it now. Alright, let's update the stat block here. So he knows Terran. That's a good language to know. Fire, Poison, Radiant. Modified his stats just a little bit. Gave him a little more health. Gave him some strength. Normal dex. Um, I want something. Let's look. Let's get some inspiration here. Alright, so they're in the meadows. They drop resin. What's something about these things? They're very simple creatures. And these ones don't use uh, ranged attacks, so... I don't know. Maybe maybe I just don't do anything else. Like, don't give them any sort of fancy things. Like, just be done with them. They have a claw attack. They have these resistances. They know Terran, and that's it. They, they're slow. They have a little bit of health. They have okay armor. Yeah, let's be done with it. Keep the treelings simple. Alright, so that monster's done. So that means we move on to the Great Dwarfs. Alright. So yeah, they get to throw stones. Because they're the adult versions of Graylings. That's fine. But that does mean we are calling these tree dwarfs. A tree dwarf. They're going to go up to the medium size. They're going to stay plants. They're going to stay chaotic neutral. Um, instead of one hit dice, though, we're going to go with that. We're going to shoot for a one half challenge rating. Um. So, a one-half challenge rating, if we look at this table here, has an HP of around 50 to 70 HP. So, if they're a medium creature, let's bump up their con. Let's bump up their strength. 
They're not very dexterous. None of the other stuff needs to be buffed up. Um, but we do want to hit their hit dice a little bit harder. So, um, they're D8s. So, like, 10 D8. Ooh, that, wow, actually, that hit it pretty close. Um... That's a little high. So what about eight? That's perfect. So um, they're gonna be one and a half CR. That's what we're gonna shoot for here. They're still the the resistances are probably the same. Fire, poison, spirit. Yep. Um, so they have the same claw attack. But, um, we're gonna up it to a d6, and because the strength is higher, it should be better. Also, we're gonna go melee, or ranged weapon attacks based on strength, and we're gonna call it, uh, a stone, stone? um, ranged attack, let's do that 20, 60 foot strength of 1d6 so they now hit for 5 damage either ranged or melee um hmm We can do something like give them pack tactics. I don't think the damage I'd put those very high. This is six to eight. Um, he's pulling five per round. So we could just bump his strength up to 16 as well to kind of, that'll put it at 6. Or I could bump it to 1d8 plus 3 slashing damage, which would be 5 plus 3, that'd be 8 damage, but that's a little too high, I think. Oh, well, I would lower his strength back down to 14, so it would be 7. No, I like bumping the strength to 16 seems fine. Let's give him a little bit more dex, make him a little bit speedier. Um, their charisma is never going to go up. They don't talk much, so... So let's bump their wisdom. So the armor class is 13 because the dex is up a little bit higher. So we could just bump it up to 15. That seems reasonable because... So his armor class 13, so if we can... Maybe we should go back. So we're back to 13 seems okay. They're tankier with 60 hit points. Um, let's get rid of the 25. They're medium creatures, so I think like, giving them back up to 30 feet speed is fine. I don't really they don't have a swim speed in the game. They just claw and throw some. I mean these are very basic creatures. I'm not trying to like blow the world away with these they're just kind of 
if I want to run a game that's in the Valheim universe, I would like to have stats for all these different types of creatures. This one seems good. All right. All right, so we got a tree dwarf done. We could move on to a the do the brute and the shaman, but I'm kind of thinking I want to try to switch gears here. So doing all the bosses, Aethir would be kind of cool. We could name him the. We can, like, the, I already got the generic name for him. It'd be a Thunder Stag. So. So he's got an antler swipe attack, a lightning attack, which I remember is like a cone of lightning that comes out of him. Then he's got a big stomp attack. I don't remember what the big stomp attack does. It might, maybe that's the lightning thing. So maybe let's watch this guy fight him, see how the fight goes, just to get a reminder of how. Oh, he's already, dude, he's already killing this thing. Is he even going to get anything off? Alright, is that the lightning attack or is that the stomp attack? Oh, there's the stomp. It's like a big AoE. Alright. So he does the lightning, which is like a cone of lightning. He does a big stomp. Which is like a big AoE of more probably... Like, that would probably be thunder damage. The lightning attack would be lightning damage. And then he's got just as probably just... A, we'll just do like a normal melee. Um, Alright, so let's find... I think Stag is a creature. No, it's not. Wait, what is it? It's called a giant Stag? I don't know. Maybe? Giant Elk. Alright, that's what it is. Uh, I mean, he's pretty big, right? Would you call him Giant? So a Giant Stag... So, or Giant Elk, let's use the preset. Is a huge beast. Um... No, I, I want him to be large. So I think we'll just do a regular, we'll start with a regular elk. Large beast, there we go. Now, they're all kind of like gods, right? So Aethir is a god of, he's a large stag wrapped in chains with electric antlers. Yeah, I'm gonna say these, we're gonna, they're gonna be all gods. They're all gonna be celestials. Um, the bosses. Alignment. Chaotic neutral sounds good. All right. Uh, hit dice. Um, and armor. He's not hard to hit. So I a normal elk just has straight up ten. The dex isn't even that high. Got some strength, some cons, and some wisdom. So we're going to bump the wisdom way up, because he's a god. Um, and then the intelligence also. Bump it up, too. Um, charisma also. Like, this is a celestial being. Like, it should have some of those things. Um, so, 
What's his, like, damage? So he's immune to stagger, but he has no other resistances or immunities. So... That's, stagger doesn't really translate to anything in D&D. &D. I could make him have an ability. Um, we're going to keep the charge. Um, I just like this. So he can do... An, I mean, we call it ram. They call it antler swipe. Um, we'll just keep it as ram. Um, we're not going to have him use his hooves. Because we're going to have those two special attacks. Also, hit dice. So he's a large creature. I feel like tw I'm, like the initial is I'm like twelve hit dice. First boss. Cr what? What do we want the first boss to be? Cr five seems reasonable for the first boss. I mean, trolls are like already Cr five. We could shoot for something a little weaker, like CR, CR three. Do we what level we want? I think a party of level ones, maybe level twos. What would be a good? And, I, and then I gotta think: Are we gonna give this creature legendary actions? I feel like letting him be able to move as a legendary action and just give him one legendary action a turn and he can either move or, or swipe with his antler as a legendary action would be kind of just something that gives him just a little bit makes him bossy bossy so we're gonna shoot for all right let's split the difference between the thing what i'm thinking is three and five and let's make him cr4 so all right so that means for his basic antler attack should be this ram. Um, 1d6 plus 3. Alright, so 5 feet, 1 target, strength. So we're doing 1d6. So he's a box. We're just gonna do 2d6. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be bludgeoning damage at action. Oh, we're gonna call this ram at action. So this means he's now doing 10 damage, 2d6 with the bludgeoning. Um, I don't know if we're going to give him multi-attack. Probably not going to give him multi-attack. So we're just going to have him do ram. Then he's going to have stomp. Thun wait, thunder stomp. That's what we're going to call it. So we're going to do a... I guess we could do melee spell. If we do this, if we use preset. Um, shit. So. Yeah, this is bizarre because. Oh, see, this is what we did with what's... This is just basically what I wanted. So dumb. I mean, two-headed is what I basically gave the other guy, which is fine. Um... <laughs> Here we go. The monster stomps its hooves. Each creature within 
15 feet seems reasonable. Of the monster must succeed on a DC. Twelve. Said dexterity, we're gonna make it constitution saving throw. Or take why is it strength? Guess that's fine. Um call this uh thunder spawn. Um So, it's a big AoE around him. It's 15 foot range. We can hit up to two creatures. We already have it doing uh, 2d6. We already have it doing 10 damage to. So, if we want to do it like a neat AoE Thunder Stomp, and we're going to give it a recharge. Which is what we're gonna do so this is gonna be recharge five six um we're gonna make it pretty powerful so we're gonna make it i like d10s 2d10 and instead of blunder it's gonna be thunder damage and be knocked prone sounds great uh we don't need to add the fly and boom See what that looks like yeah so everybody takes 14 thunder damage beautiful i love this ability art right there stomps his hooves each creature within 15 feet of the elk so it's that's pretty that's a big radius but it, like yeah he's gonna get it off and he's gonna do it he's gonna he's gonna be a problem um language snow he doesn't have any languages we're gonna work on that um we're going to work on his armor. I think we want to give him a natural armor. Give him at least two. And then his hit points. Yeah, his hit points are fine, I think. Did we already calculate that? No, his hit points are not fine. His hit points need to be much higher. Um, so, since he's a large creature, we've got 12 d10. 18 d10. 117. That looks great. That sounds great. 117 is yeah that's right in the range perfect all right um, 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 um so he's not gonna get dark vision but i kind of want him he kind of just gives off light like if we watch during that fight he kind of just glows with his electric key antlers Right? Yeah, he gives off light. So, um, so I think I'm just gonna have him give off like 10 feet of bright light and 10 feet of dim, an additional 10 feet of dim. All right, um, the last thing I wanna do is the cone. Basically, it's a breath attack. Breath weapon cone. So, the monster... He's not going to exhale. He's going to... Lightning in a 30-foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a DC 12 dexterity saving throw. Taking this is going to be even stronger, I think, than the stomp. I want this to be like the big. So, what, 2d 12? Lightning damage. Oh, uh, recharge. Five, six. I could make this just recharge six. 
So um, at the beginning of his turn, if he gets a six, he gets both of his abilities. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So he recharges on a six, and then he recharges a stomp on a five six. Um. Lightning breath exhales lightning in a 30 foot cone. Each creature in the area must make a low. So that's the thing is this is low 2d12 lightning damage. You know what? Let's uh, modify this and instead of it being strength 2d10, it's just a straight 2d10. 2d10 lightning damage, 2d12 lightning damage, or thunder damage, 2d10. Okay. Um, then he can run and charge and ram things to do extra damage. Knock him prone. Oh, he's got 13 here as the... Maybe I just bump these to 13. So if we calculate the damage per round, so the, let's just say Lightning Breath's the first round, hits two people, it's 26. Second round, he hits two people for 22. And the second, last round, he can, let's say he does his Ram, which is 17. And then we divide that by three rounds. So he does an average of 22 damage per round. 20, 20, 22. All right, um, attack bonus. Let's do saves, 13, that's great. Um, he is a large creature with, I think if they gave him 18, constitution's only 12. So it puts him at 117, perfect. Um, the armor class is 12. Okay, so apparently we need to boost his armor class to get a seal. Yeah, so... I'm thinking 14 on my class. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with how this guy's turning up, so we're going to call him the Thunder Stag. Um, he's a large celestial, chaotic neutral. He's I like this 50 speed, makes him speedy boy. Um, 18 hit dice, putting him in a good chunk of boss-like HP. He's got a 14 natural armor. He can ram by charging and hitting with his head. He can thunder stomp. Like, I would say, like, the first round, he runs and rams somebody, knocks him prone. Um, second round, thunder stomps. It's everybody that's in their radius. And then maybe, like, oh, we were going to give him legendary actions. So we're going to give him one legendary action. And I think we're going to do the horns, which will be the stag makes a ram attack as a legendary action. And then also we're going to call it hooves, horn and hooves, horns and hooves. Um, 
can move up to half. It's, uh, the stag moves up to half its speed without provoking attacks. So he gets one legendary action, and we're going to give him one legendary resistance, I believe. So I think I can find that in here. Uh, wow. Okay, don't have legendary resistance as a... find something that has a legendary resistance so if we go to beyond oh no the goblins here <laughs> just saw you come in all right um yeah if we go here and we look up another dragon dragons are always a uh, adult dragon so it's always a good creature so legendary resistance all right so this is the wording so if the if the stag fails a save a card can choose to succeed and we're gonna do one per day. Um and we're gonna add it to the abilities. Alright, cool. I think this rounded him off now as a boss creature. So we gave him one legendary resistance and one legendary action. Um, the legendary actions he could take is horns or hooves. Oh, he doesn't really have horns. I don't know why I call it horns. I'm gonna call it antlers. The antlers and the hooves. Perfect. Cool thing about legendary actions is you can come up with, like, clever, cute little names for them. You don't have to, um... Like, I wouldn't name this the Ram Legendary Action, because we already have a Ram Action. We would just be a call It's called Antlers, which lets him make a Ram Attack. Um, and he only gets one Legendary Resistance, so he gets to resist one thing. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, for Languages, I kind of wanted to give him... Um, celestial? Speak Celestial? Passive Perception, Challenge Rating 4. Yeah, this was a good one. I like this one. Cute little level CR4 boss creature. You know what, though? I need to add the um, antlers to his CR. Oh, okay. So, because... Alright. Here, this is going to... Legendary actions make creatures much more powerful than this is why the amount of damage it does increases a lot. So every turn he'll be able to the first turn he lightning breaths twice and then he can ramp. Then he can thunder stomp, which does twenty Oops. Shit. Alright, thirteen plus thirteen plus ten. All right, then we're gonna do plus 11, plus 11, plus 10. And then we're gonna do plus 10, plus 10. That divided up by three. His average damage increased from 22 to 29 damage per round, which just bumped his offensive CR to four and kept his CR rating at four. So that didn't, that's perfect. It kept the CR rating at four. All right. I love this. I love this creature. I think it's great. So we're going to save the stat block. And we're going to save the image. And yeah. Now I got the Thunderstab. So I got Eek there. The first boss done. So I got a lot more I would want to do. Like, like oh my god. A Death Skeeto as a D&D &D creature. Ooh. Ooh, he's so good. Um, 
yeah, I think maybe we're gonna keep doing this. Maybe next week uh, we'll have another stream, um, and then we're gonna keep continuing on working on all, turning all these things into creatures. Because I definitely do want to do a um, Valheim campaign game. I think that would be great. It'd be a lot of fun. Like my whole idea is, you, everybody creates humans. They start with nothing. You start basically in a loincloth. And you guys have to figure out how to, like, create gear and gather materials and fight. Like, I just, like, the reason why I like the idea of starting a campaign, like, at level one with no gear is, like, okay, so let's look up the boar. Like, a boar is a CR one quarter creature. Like, is not scary. Like... 4 damage, charge, but if you're at level 1 and you only have, and you have an AC of 10, and you only have like between 6 and 14 HP, which would be like kind of what I'm thinking is the max you would have at level 1, I guess like a Barbarian with high constitution score could have 12, 14, 15, like up to maybe 16 health, but... A charge from a boar can do 2d6 of damage, which would be at least 7 damage. Or, like, on average, 7 damage. And then knock them prone. Um, relentless. If the boar takes 7 damage or less, that would lose his HP to zero. Oh, that's really neat, too. I did not know that that was the thing boars had. Like, I would never run a boar. Like, in any sort of campaign, unless it was, like, really low level. And the idea of running a boar can like, being level one with, like, let's just say you're, you've got, like, a, a club you, like, a stick you found on the ground, or, like, maybe, like, a good piece of club, and it would be, like, a d4 plus your strength modifier for the attack as the weapon, and now you gotta beat the crap out of this boar by yourself with 11, like, that's, that's a fight right there. <laughs> it's, it's cool. I like the idea of it. I really want to. I want to really want to do like a survival-based, low-level campaign. I think it would be interesting. Um, add things like you can't. You're down, guys. All right, you're down. We got one player. Who else is down? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Valheim kind of survival horror. Not survival horror, but survival. Survival game, where you're fighting a boar. And my and the graylings I just created. Sorry, sorry, they're not called graylings. They're called uh, what I call them? Treelings, treelings. That's what I call. Them. It's a good name, treeling. Like that works. I like it. And then tree dwarves, treelings, tree dwarves. You have to summon Ekthir. <laughs> Trolls. What else? What's a ya Oh, Yagu's like, he's like the final- Oh, well, that's a spoiler, because that's like the one boss I haven't killed yet. It'd be fun to come up with his stats. Yeah, then fighting Ekthir, somebody- Yeah, what did I say? Did I say something else? I don't know what I said. Um, well, he's not called Ekthir, I call him a Thunderstag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a Thunderstag would be the what I would call it. If I'm trying to not step on any copyright names um trolls fine though trolls you can call anything a troll you might have to come up with a new name for death skeetos though because but man death skeetos such a good name i would get like these guys would probably just have really low health and just really high damage i feel like that like what D, D creatures have really low health and high damage um Try to think that my favorite one that's low health, high damage would be the um, those skulls, fire skulls, flame skulls, flame skulls. They run. They're just they're just fireball machines. That's what a flame skull is. But like, yeah, coming coming up, like we're gonna maybe do like doing the stats for bone mass would be fucking fun. Like turning all this into this is like such good D and D like stuff to do. And then the idea of making, like, a world with all these different biomes. 
that players have to try to explore and get gear and just kind of like just figure the world out and it's just completely homebrew um and it's completely like i might have to buff the wolves though so actually like remember when i said like wolves are fine like wolves have wolf stats but like wolves in falheim are way more brutal i think than a wolf would be in D D. so kenku What's a Kenku? Like, what would be a Kenku? Yeah, but in Valheim, what are... What in Valheim's the Kenku? Oh, do they hit hard? Oh, they don't hit that hard. Uh, I guess the ambusher, they get... Well, that just gives them advantage on the attack. Thank you, we're fun. Well, I mean, there is the assassin stat block, which is actually a, a good, actually another good, um, assassin. I don't know the spell assassin. Assassin stat block is a great stat block for exact, for high damage, low health. 78 health. I mean, that's pretty chunky and it's a high CR, but like if they get their assassinate off, auto crit with sneak attack plus the short sword does 76 poison damage. Oh, I love assassins. They're some of my favorite. These are good. This is just a good stat block to use if you just want to like fuck someone up. Yeah, you're raging because I'm pretty sure. Didn't I almost kill you with an assassin? Or maybe that was Ethan. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Alright guys, I think we're going to end the stream there. Um, I could sit here and make monsters all night. But um, I think we did a good job. I got some good stuff I can uh, turn into YouTube videos too. So, um, thanks for joining me. Kazumeki, I'll see you on... Uh, we'll play some space right after this. Um, but, uh... I'm gonna end my D and D stream. Thanks everybody for showing up. Maybe I gotta show off my. Hey, hey, have you seen my new? I got new screen transitions. Ready? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We get it. You vape. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Talk to you later.